In, In this, this next, next session, session, we're going to begin looking at job, job costing. Now, now job, job costing is used in an environment where, where each customer order is going, going to be slightly different in some way. So, so for, for example, if you, you have a company that tailors suits, suits to customer specification, each suit that is made for each individual customer will be slightly different in some way. The material used might be a bit different each time, and the quantity of material used is going to change, and the style or the cut of the suit may be slightly different as well, depending on the customer's specification. If that is the case, then for each customer order we accept, we keep a job card to record the information associated with that order. So, so a job, job card simply records all of the costs associated with a particular customer order. So if we just note that down, job, job cost again is used in an environment If we, we have, have such an environment, environment then, then we'll, we'll keep, keep a job, job card. And, and the approach, approach we take for this is on our, our job, job card we will record, first of all, the direct, direct material cost associated with, with the job. Then, then we, we will record the direct labor cost of the job. job. Remember, Remember the sum, sum of our direct, direct costs will, will give us the prime, prime cost. cost. Once, Once we've calculated the prime cost, we're going to add on some, some charge for our production, production overheads. So this, so this will be based on our overhead, overhead absorption, absorption rate. rate. When we, when we add, add on, on our production overheads to the prime cost, cost this, this gives, gives us the total production, production cost of the job. job. Finally, Finally then, we may, may be asked to add, add on in the question some charge for non-production non overheads. Our non-production non overhead charge tends to be very straightforward. It's usually just a percentage of our total production cost, or perhaps a percentage of the prime cost. When we add that on then, we get the total cost of the job. To which we may add a markup or margin, margin so, that so that we can, we can earn a profit, profit on the job to calculate the selling, selling price. And that's, and that's our, our job card. card. Let's, Let's have, have a look at an exercise, exercise then so we, so we can put, put this into practice. practice. So, so we're, we're told then, then a local jobbing, jobbing company has just, just completed a one-off one job which involved making a specialist iron frame. So you so unique to customer specification. The item, the item was given the job number 606. We're, we're told then the materials issued, issued to the job. So these, these will be the direct material costs associated with the job. There were two, two types, types of steel, A and B, and were, and were given, given the quantity used and the cost, cost per meter. meter. But, but then, then we are told that the 60 meters, meters of grade, grade B steel were, were unused and returned to the store or to, or to the warehouse. Now we, now we just need to be careful here when we're preparing our job card 
We are, we are only, only going, going to charge, charge the customer, customer for, the for the materials actually used in the, in the production of this specialist iron frame. frame. Then we're, we're told the iron frame, frame involves two production, production departments, welding, welding and, and finishing. And we're, and we're told how many, many hours were worked, worked on the job, the job in, in each, each of the two, two departments. departments. Then, then we, we are also given the labor, labor costs or the hourly rates, rates in, in each of those two, two departments. In, in welding, welding then, it's, it's four, four pounds per normal, normal hour and, and one, one pound overtime premium. premium. Now, now this, this is the only bit where, where we may need, need to be very, very, very careful in this type of question. Remember, Remember back, back to when we looked at labour costs, costs and allocating them as direct, direct or indirect labour costs to the company. And, and what, what did we say about, about the overtime premium? premium? We, we said, said that, that the overtime premium will only be a direct cost to the company if the overtime has specifically been requested by the customer in order for them, in order for the job to be completed early. Now this is similar in this chapter. When we're, when we're thinking, thinking about, are we, are we going, going to charge the customer the overtime premium, then the, then the answer, answer is we will, we will only ever charge the customer directly for the, for the overtime, overtime premium if, if they, they have specifically requested early completion. If, if the reason we have worked, worked overtime is just because the factory is generally busy, then we're, then we're not going to charge that overtime premium directly to the customer. Instead, the overtime premium would be an indirect cost, it will be included as part of our overhead costs, and absorbed across all of the jobs we complete. So, so in a job, job costing question, question, you will only charge the overtime, overtime premium to the customer if they have, they have requested early completion. completion. Instead, in this question, because we haven't been told that the customer requested early completion, all we are going to charge them for is the total number of hours we have spent working on their job multiplied by the basic rate in, in each, each of the two departments. departments. Finally then, we're, we're given information about the production overheads and we're told we charge our overheads based, based on three pounds per direct, direct labour hour. The company uses cost plus pricing and adds 40% to the cost of the job to determine price. So this is just a markup. And what, and what we need to do then is prepare the job card for job, for job number 606. So, so we'll follow the pro format, format we looked at a few minutes, minutes ago. We're going, We're going to begin, begin with our direct, our direct materials. materials. We had, we had steel, steel grade, grade A, a which, which we were told, we used 400 meters at five, five pounds per, per meter. So, so our total, total then will be 2,000 pounds. pounds. For, for steel, steel grade, grade B, we need, we need to be careful. careful. Remember, Remember, we were, we were told that, that 800, 800 meters were issued to job, to job 606. 606. But, but 60, 60 of these were returned, were returned to, the to the warehouse. And we're, and we're not, not going, going to charge the customer for the material we didn't use. So we, so we subtract, subtract the 60, 60 meters that were, that were returned from the, from the total, and the, and the cost per meter was six pounds. So that, so that gives, gives us 4,440 4, in total. And that's, and that's our direct, direct material cost done. done. Moving, Moving on, on then to direct, to direct labor. labor. 
We have, we have established, established that for the direct, direct labor cost, we are, we are only, only charging, charging the customer the basic, the basic rate. rate. They, they did, did not specifically request early, early completion, completion, so we're, so we're not, not going, going to charge, charge them for the overtime premium. premium. So when, so when we're looking at our direct, direct labor, labor it could be the total, total hours worked, worked on the job in each, in each department, department multiplied by the basic, basic rate. rate. So we, so have, we two have two departments, departments welding. If we, if look, we look back, back at the question, question and see how many, many hours have we worked in total, total on the job in the, in the welding, welding department. department. We're, We're told, told there was 220 normal hours and 100 overtime hours. So 100 hours after 5 o'clock. We're, We're going, going to charge, charge the customer for all of the hours worked, worked at, at the, the basic rate. rate. So the, so the total, total hours spent, spent on this job, job were 320 in the welding, welding department, department and 200 hours in the finishing department. So for welding then, 320 hours at a basic rate of £4 per hour gives us 1280. In the finishing department, we have 200 hours at a basic rate of five pounds, gives us a thousand. So that's our direct materials and our direct labor complete. Now we could just do a subtotal here to calculate the prime cost of the job. I'm moving on then to our next step, our production overheads. We're told in the question that our production overheads are charged at a rate of three pounds per direct labor hour in each of the two departments. We already know how many labor hours were worked in each department, so for welding then, there were 320 hours and our overhead absorption rate is three pounds. So that will give us 960. In the finishing department, 200 hours multiplied by three again gives us 600. So once again, we can do a subtotal then, add our production overheads to the prime cost to give us the total production cost. Ten thousand two hundred and eighty. Now we saw in our pro forma that at this point um, we may need to add on a charge for non-production overheads. However, we haven't been told anything about non-production overheads in this particular question, so we don't need to consider them. Our final bit of information in the question, if you recall, was that we apply a markup to our cost of 40%. To calculate the selling price. So our last step then will be to add on our markup, which we have been told will be 40% of the cost. And we've just worked out that the cost of the job is 10,280. So 40% of that gives us 4,112 to calculate a selling price of 14392 And we've completed our job card for job 606.